Hey guys, Mike and Matt, Iron Trap Garage. Uh, we are working on the free t doing the steering box extension. So in the last video, we got the steering box all set up. Uh, I got it tacked in place, and we, you know, got made sure the steering wheel was kind of at a, a nice uh, location and angle. So now we need to get the actual sector section uh, built out. It's not quite long enough because we're using a box from an F1 pickup. The sector shaft is short and the pitman arm ends up being basically inside the cow. I've seen some guys that run it inside the cow and then they just put uh, the drag link through the body. It, it looks okay, but I think I'd like to put the uh, actual pitman arm outside of the body. So we need to make an extension. So uh, it's been about a week of me dreaming up ideas. And I found a piece of tubing actually at work um, that was lent to me forever and ever uh, that we can use as the extension. So this piece is just smaller than the hole that we drilled in the body. Looks good, I think the diameter doesn't look too big. Uh, sometimes when I see guys doing these, this conversion, they end up with a big, I mean the, the, the circle part of the pitman arm ends up being like this big around. Kind of looks a little billety in my opinion and I don't, I don't love the look of it. So we're trying to keep it small and condensed and flow and not. The, the car is super tiny so you put a giant shaft out the end, it kind of looks very disproportional. So we have this piece here, which Mike's got the nut there, so that's the nut that goes on, holds the pitman arm on. It barely fits into this piece of tubing in the ID. So I, I was asking around a bunch of work, and one of the guys there is uh, a lot smarter than I am with, with basically everything, but especially it's machining. It's not hard to do. <laughs> he gave me the idea of cutting this nut down on the mill on each side, down just a little bit to get enough that we can fit the socket in. So we're going to go down like a size in the socket, and that socket will fit, the nut will fit inside of the socket, and we can pretty much good to go. The reason we're doing that is this isn't like a common size, and to get a thin nut that would do this, is there's probably isn't anything that exists. And being resourceful, we're going to mill this down just a little bit on every side, it'll fit in. Cut our, we'll cut our piece down to the right length that we want, and then we got, we're got going to have to make a new pitman arm um, because we're going to cut this top spline section off and we're going to drop it in, put that on the mill, drop it into that tubing, weld that in, that will allow us to slide it in on the steering box, and then we need to make a new pitman arm. So I have the fun job <laughs> of cutting a new pitman arm out of this half inch hunk of steel. Uh, this is a piece that my old man was here last summer doing some kind of, I don't know, madness. I, I don't get involved, but he uh, was cutting something with my torch, half inch plate. He left me the drop, gifted it to me. And uh, what that is actually ended up being perfect. I was bitching at the time when he gave it to me, but uh, it actually worked out well because it's a similar thickness to what the pitman arm is already. So we're kind of sticking with the same thickness as the original. We're gonna cut the shape out of that and then we're gonna sand it down to look kind of right and uh, we're going to make it about an inch longer so we have quicker steering for when we potentially put this on a dirt track so we're not yanking on the wheels super hard to just make a turn. Yeah so it, it's uh, from talking to a lot of guys um, that have that've done this and reading a bunch on different forums it seems to be a kind of consensus is using this stock pitman arm the steering is really slow when you use it on a little track road steering. You got to turn the wheel a bunch of times to get it to do anything. So by adding a little bit of length to this, it'll make the steering a little quicker. And worst case, if we don't like it, we're just using half inch plate. We can make another, we can make another setup, you know, next summer if we don't like what we have here because it's a pretty simple design. So we're gonna cobble all this together and hopefully it looks like something cool and actually functions by the end of this video. So we'll see what happens.
All right, so it's been a little bit since we uh, we checked in on this project. So uh, Mike ground and got this arm uh, roughed in. Uh, it still needs to be rounded edges and some areas just gotten a little more symmetrical. Uh, the one thing he did is he took the hole saw. I didn't have any good way to spin this on the lathe to bore it. So we took the hole saw uh, and we put on the mill and, and punched a hole through here. Slow and steady. It's a little crude of a way to do it, but it, it did work. Cut a pretty pretty nice hole. We had a brand new hole saw, which was uh, really nice. So we punched the hole out to an inch, inch and three quarters hole saw. Uh, the tubing we're using is actually an inch and three quarters OD. Uh, but by doing that, I knew that the hole saw wasn't going to cut 100% true and was going to open the hole up slightly larger than an inch and three quarters. So by doing that, it got this all to fit together pretty nice so that we can actually weld everything together. Uh, so that plan sort of worked out pretty good. Uh, Mike also drilled the, uh, the hole in this end. Uh, so we, we scavenged the, the ball end off of the old pitman arm. That's going to fit into here. And I can TIG weld um, this. I'm trying to turn it here. I'm going to TIG weld this ball in place uh, from the front and the back. And that will allow it to attach to the drag link. So that's great. So a little more sanding on that, and we can soon TIG weld that. Uh, the other thing we did is I got this splined end that we scavenged off the other uh, pitman arm. Uh, I turned it down so that it matched the, uh, the ID of this tube. So it's three uh, inch and three quarters uh, OD, and we turned it, it was a quarter wall, so it was inch and a half ID. So I turned this down just below that fit in. We drilled and tapped some holes just to put set screws in here so that we can hold it in place as we're mocking it up. Um, and then we can eventually plug weld this uh, through here and then I'll also weld, weld the end as well. And that should work pretty well. Uh, I left the piece. It's still long because uh, we need to figure out the exact length and I kind of needed to be able to mock this all up to tell that uh, how long it needed to be. The other problem that we had, uh, we overcame was uh, because I wanted this tubing to be a smaller diameter, uh, as small of a diameter as possible, we could not fit the stock, uh, the nut in stock form uh, in here with the socket that, uh, that it needed. Uh, the nut fit inside, but the, the socket, the thickness of the socket, the socket wasn't going to fit inside. And the tubing that would fit that, that was a, a, you know, at least a quarter wall, uh, was too large. It was going to look really bulky, and I didn't want that look. So... What I did is I took the stock nut and I took, uh, it ended up being about 85 or 80 thousandths off of each side. And what that did is that allowed the nut to go down a size or two in socket size. So that slips down into this inch and an eighth socket now. And this inch and an eighth socket fits just inside of this tubing. So now we can tighten this down with this smaller socket and we have tubing that isn't so obnoxiously large. So uh, that's kind of where we're at. Now we can start mocking some stuff up um, and see where everything's at. Then we can position the arm. I can weld this all together and cut this down. And hopefully uh, here shortly we will have uh, a steering free tee.
Okay, guys. So we're we're working on the uh, on this extension here. We got the spline section I showed you before. So one neat thing I want to show you guys. Um, I found these little um, hardened pins that have pretty incredible shear force. The rating on these little pins I think is something around like three thousand uh, per pin. And uh, what we did is we we milled a hole down in that was basically the same size as the pin, so we could drop it down. And I made it just a little bit shorter. So I can pull this out and we'll get a shot of how it's sitting in there. But there's this little tiny pin here that goes through the tubing and goes about halfway into the depth uh, of this spline section. So what that's going to do is it's going to lock it in. We can weld this pin in place and made it just a little bit shorter uh, so that we can fill up the hole with weld and we can blend it out and you can't even see it's done. Uh, and it's going to give some additional strength to this as well as plug welding and welding around the outside edge. So I'm going to drop this little one in, get this welded, and we're just about ready to start welding up the rest of these pieces and make this thing steer. So we got everything welded up in the car, we got our steering extension welded up, but we're running into interference on the cow. The end of the arm, when it swings all the way back, it actually rubs on the cow. So we're going to fire up the flame wrench, we're going to heat the arm up and add about 5 degrees of a bend to it, 
and then let it cool and heat it up again and then bend it five degrees back so then we have a nice step in it, it's flat, and it won't rub the cow when we're turning lock to lock. So try not to catch ourselves on fire. So, holy shit. <laughs> it steers. It steers. This is crazy. And it, everything's just like literally clamped or sitting together. So, you know, excuse the creaking noise, but like this is a big deal. It steers. Uh, all our parts work. Uh, the last couple shots you saw, uh, we, we got the torch out. We heated the arm. There was a couple of reasons we did that. Uh, like Mike mentioned earlier, it was hitting the body. And what happened is when we originally started designing the extension, it was a lot longer. But when you stood back from the car, um, I'm really, I don't want to say picky, but when I look at cars at car shows and stuff, a lot of times there's things that stand out to me that like I think could be a little different and would make it like flow better. So the pitman arm on these cow steering that a lot of guys do, I think sometimes look real bulky when they're on a tee. And uh, I worked real hard to make this arm look like it's an old cast part or, you know, an original F1 arm uh, like we started with. And we heated and bent that arm so that it cleared this with it being closer to the body. The other thing it did is it gave it a nice look. It flowed better and it doesn't just look like a big chunk of metal. So yeah. um, it flows awesome. Yeah, it flows. We'll get a picture to show at the end of the, when it's full lock. It like sits along the door perfect. It gives it a nice flow. Now we can push the car outside and make sure everything kind of looks good from a distance. You can make noises and act. Yep. Blub, 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 blub. So yeah. our next step, which we'll probably show in another video further down the line, once we get the front uh, front axle where we want it for the uh, the caster, for yeah. the caster, we can actually set up the steering. Because the, the cross shaft right now will hit the wishbones in the frame. So we actually need to bend the mounts down and kind of modify a few things out front. But we don't want to do that until the caster is set and we have everything fastened in the front end. Because right now everything's kind of loosey goosey. Yeah, it's and barely. I mean, we could take this thing apart with like almost no bullets. But so we set it now, we may have to redo it again down the line. So we'll figure we'll just wait a little bit to, to tackle that. Yeah. Well, I think we'll just have to cut into our uh, our little bit of profit we have on the car at this point um, and just buy a set of front tires. I've been looking around um, online and hitting up a bunch of people I know and I just can't find a set of 550 front tires um, that are usable and cheap enough to uh, buy used tires. So I think we're just going to buy a set of brand new front 550 tires. Once we do that, we can get the front end sitting down where we want, like Mike mentioned, and we can set the caster. And then we're going to show you guys, um, like Mike, Mike mentioned, on the spindles, how to bend those steering arms. It's a real common thing that um, this is what guys have been doing on these cars since the beginning of time uh, to clear the steering when you have uh, big drop axles and modified cars like this. So we'll show you the process. Again, it's just using the torch and uh, the big wrench and making it work. So uh, huge, huge process. I'm psyched. Yeah, this has been like a four-week. Something, three-week. Oh my God. Three week process since we started doing this. The further along we get, we're going to run into projects. The next big one that we're not going to tackle right away is pedals. Yep. We're going to run into a lot of the same stuff. It may be a multi step video, but I think the next thing we talked about doing is the transmission mount. Because right now it's currently just sitting on a piece of box tubing. And if we want to drive this this summer, we're going to have to send this to an engine builder at some point relatively soon. Yep. So getting the transmission mount done will give us at least. Uh, we can at least take the engine out and we have most of the stuff set. So, Yeah, so that'll get us, um, that's pretty straightforward, but it's probably the next 
big step to uh, get the car more complete. Um, but yeah, so thanks guys for watching. Um, we appreciate you sticking with us uh, for all these videos. Um, as you, always, we do videos on the free team when we have a project that is finished uh, on Tuesdays. Uh, Fridays is the Sweetheart Roadster. I've been uh, kind of slowing down with that just because we've been doing some other projects on this, but we'll have a video soon for that. And we've been throwing in some other videos as your request. We're doing some tool videos, tools that don't suck. And, uh, and the Sport Coupe that we're doing is... Uh, it's the best name we could come up with yeah, for that term. It's great. <laughs> so that, that's the other one we're throwing in. So if you guys want to see anything, definitely drop us a comment. As always, share, like, everything else. Uh, let us know that you like what you're watching. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.